And we all turn to the book of Genesis in chapter 26. Genesis and chapter 26. We are going to be reading from verse 1 to verse 13. Genesis 26, verse 1 to verse 13. When we were um, in South Africa, uh, where we were, the area we were, which is called the Eastern Cape, went through a time of drought. I don't know if anyone here uh, has ever experienced drought. I'm not talking about the drought they have here. I think they've had a drought here before when they said, that, well, you need to cut down the amount of time you use to water your plants. That's not a drought. I'm talking about when you can't shower. You can't flush stuff down the toilet. That kind of drought. That everywhere is dry, the ground is turned brown, that was once lush and green has now become uh, 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 brown. And, and uh, uh, of course, the, 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 there are bands of uh, water uh, being uh, 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 put out by the local authority. And even though there was a little bit of rain, very, very little bit of rain, for some reason, this rain was not falling where it needed to be fall. Tonight, I share that tonight, to simply this tonight, say this. When things happen beyond our control, we simply don't know what to do. We have no idea how to deal with it. We have no idea how to handle it. And the bottom line is this, unless God does something, unless God gets involved, church, there is so much trouble you and I are in tonight. If God does not step in and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, we are in trouble. Listen to James chapter 5, 7 says this, Therefore, be patient, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Simply put tonight, church, we need God. And I want to preach a sermon I've simply called when famine comes. And God wants to speak to us tonight. What do you do when famine comes? Genesis 26, verse 1 to verse 3. There was a famine in the land Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, "Do not go down to Egypt. Uh, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to for to you and to your descendants, uh, I give all these lands, and I will perform the offer which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, uh, and in your seed all the nations of the earth uh, shall be blessed, because Abraham will." obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked about his wife, and he said, she's my sister, for he was uh, uh, afraid to say she's my wife, uh, because he thought lest the men of the place kill me for Rebecca, because she's beautiful to behold. Now it came to pass uh, when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked through the window and saw uh, that there was, uh, 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 th and there was Isaac uh, showing uh, endearments to Rebecca, his wife. Uh, then Abimelech called Isaac and said, quite obviously, she's your wife. So how could you say she's my sister? Isaac said to him, because I said, lest I die, on an account of her. I'm going to stop and say this. That's a serious marriage sermon right there. So we go with, I'm going to have to come back and preach a marriage sermon about that issue right there. Anyway, let's carry on. The Bible says, and the Bible said, verse 10, and the Bible said, what is this uh, you have done to us? Uh, one of the people might soon have lain with your wife. That is definitely a marriage sermon. And you would have brought guilt on us. So Bimlik charged all his people saying, who, he who touches this man or his wife will surely be put to death. Then Isaac sold her in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord, uh, and the Lord blessed him. Verse 13. Uh, where am I? There we go. Then, uh, so though blessed him, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very 
prosperous. Father, tonight we are so grateful again to gather. We are so grateful again to come around your word. I'm praying tonight, help us, uh, speak to us, uh, 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 give us a head start, Lord, uh, and, and wisdom uh, in regarding to dealing with famine when it shows its ugly head in our heart lives. Uh, Father, tonight I pray for those online. I pray for those who are here present. Uh, speak to us, Lord. We need this word. Uh, help us to obey and help us to benefit uh, from obeying your word. We give you all the glory, all the praise tonight in Jesus' his name and all God's people said uh, amen. amen and amen. I want to look very quickly tonight at going through, going through. I remember uh, 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 sitting many, many years as a disciple uh, in conference and I'm sitting in conference and you hear stories of pastors weeping uh, uh, over people um, uh, whom that they're, 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 you could say they're thrown in the towel. Uh, these are men and women who had potential and gift in them uh, uh, in the kingdom of God and in ministry. And for whatever reason, they have even thrown in the towel or they've walked away. Uh, amen. For the calling and the purpose of God. Uh, and it was not until years later down the road when I became a pastor as well, uh, that I began to experience what these men and women um, testified of, of people that you've poured your life into, people that you've believed in, people you've prayed for, people that uh, that you have loved, couples tonight, uh, amen, who uh, uh, you invested in, um, amen, now they are thrown in the towel, uh, and here am I, I'm experiencing for myself uh, what these same people uh, had experienced uh, earlier. Somebody once said these words, experience is a wonderful thing. It enables you to recognize a mistake when you make it again. Church, we are all going to go through things in life. And verse one of our text, amen, um, the Bible tells us tonight, Abraham went through some things. He experienced some things. Uh, and the text word, the Bible text uh, uses the word a famine. Um, and now we find in our text as well, a few verses uh, that Isaac, uh, amen, is about to go down the same road his father did. Literally almost step by step. Uh, you know the account, Abraham does exactly the same thing to Abimelech. Uh, amen. He comes to the kingdom um, and he begins to tell Sarah, listen, you better tell, make sure you tell them you're my sister because you're fine woman and if they find out you're my wife they're gonna kill me and here is son doing exactly the same thing his father did many years down the road and here the son amen also now is experiencing a famine just like his father experienced many years down the road and tonight church you must understand that amen that we are going to go through some things amen we are going to go through Puberty. Puberty tonight um, affects your physical and your mental and emotional being. Um, that there are changes that take place. Um, amen. In your life, when you go through puberty, um, we're going to go through loneliness. Um, amen. A sense of feeling alone, uh, that nobody's there, nobody cares, nobody understands. Uh, we are going to go through peer pressure. This is seeking to please people. Um, amen. Um, that don't care about us. Uh, amen. With the simple aim that we want to fit in, we want to belong um, with that crowd. We are going to go through temptation. Jesus, in the Lord's prayer addresses that we are to pray amen regarding temptations but also we're going to go through what i've called amen the grandparents revenge the grandparents revenge is that when your parents begin to show your kids love mercy spoil them silly but when you're a child they beat you silly that's the grandparents revenge you go everywhere we're going to all i tell my kids listen when you get married and you have your kids that order. When you get married and have your kids, I'm going to take them. I'm going to love them. I'm going to spoil them silly, spin them around and give them back to you. Because you know, that's, that's what grandparents do. You spoil them, you bless them, you look after, hook them. Now go back and make your parents' life a misery. That's, you know, I'm just reading from the manual that, that was passed down to me. That's what it is. We're all going to experience so many things, but I'm going to tell you tonight, church, every single one of us are going to experience a famine. So what is the famine tonight? A famine is simply an extreme shortage of food. A drought tonight is when you have an excess dryness of the land. And a famine or a drought, it can affect a country, it can affect a large a geographical area, but also it can affect a person. Throughout the word of God, we are given this imagery of a famine. We see before Isaac's famine, there was Abraham's famine. And after this time, the Bible speaks about a, a time where Elisha goes for a time of famine. In the time of Haggai, in the book of Haggai, we see famine. In the book of Nehemiah, we see famine. But perhaps the most remarkable and the one which catches our attention most of all, if you read the word of God, is the famine that took place in Egypt that for seven years, this famine lasted. But the famine I'm speaking about tonight, amen, is not a famine of no food per se or a uh, drought where there is no water. The famine I'm speaking about tonight is not a physical famine. It is a spiritual famine. So let's consider coming through the famine. 
Because our story begins with, with this, this uh, disastrous statement, now there was a famine in the land. Now, this was a serious problem for Isaac. Here he is tonight. He's in danger of losing everything he had. But I want you to see tonight, this famine happened in the promised land. This is the land that supposedly is flowing with milk and honey. This is the land that God promised Abraham and his descendants. This is the land, you can say, amen, of God's blessing and God's favor. And even though Isaac, you could say, was in the will of God, he's going through, he's dealing with a famine. I want you to remember something tonight, church. We need a reminder tonight that you can be in the promised land. You can be in the will of God. You can be in a place of blessing and still experience a famine. Still experience hardship. Still experience difficulty. Still experience pushback. See, the famine I'm talking about tonight has nothing to do with lack of water or food. At least not physical water or physical food tonight. Amen. Famine is a shortage. It is an absence of something or something vital. Tonight, we need water and food to live. But Jesus takes it one step further. In Matthew 4, verse 4, he says, but he answered and said to him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Church, there are different types of famine. If you read the book of Amos, the prophet Amos describes a famine that is entirely different. And it's one that has nothing to do with a lack of food or water, but it is a famine of the word of God. We are told in Amos chapter 8, verse 11, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor of for first, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Amos is declaring there's going to come a time where there will be no word from God. There will be no prophet declaring thus says the Lord. There will be, amen, no clarity and direction. We see this also when we go down uh, to the book of First Samuel. When Samuel was a young man, the Bible says the word of God was rare in those days. That God's word, amen, was treasured. That people had not heard it for a long time. That people were trying to grab hold and and, and, uh, and, and and receive God's word anywhere it was. And Amos begins to declare this about a famine of the word of God tonight. And what he's saying tonight is those people who have refused to hear the word of God from the prophets will have no prophets to guide them in difficult times and in difficult days, especially when God's judgment would fall tonight upon his people, that those people who close their ears to the man of God, close their ears to preaching, who don't pay attention when in a house of God, who don't a man begin to focus and, and say, God, I'm going to push aside every distraction. I'm going to hear from you. I need to hear from you. There's so many things trying to buy from my attention. So many things trying to black and dark out your word for my life. And then there is entertainment. And then there's struggles at home. There's finances. There is games. There is fun. There's people. There's all these things. But God, I'm going to push them out. It says those who don't make that intention, those who invite those things, those who just fall asleep, those who just switch off, those who allow their minds to wander. He says, when times of difficulty come, you're in trouble. He says, if he speaks about famines. And we are, men and women tonight, I'm sure we have seen famines in our relationships. Where things are not just going good with people we love. I'm sure we've seen famines in our job. That you're trying to get a job and it's a case of don't call us, we'll call you. I'm sure we've seen what I call fire famines. And what I mean by fire famines or famine of fire is once where there was an abundance of fire and passion for the things of God. Once where you were not afraid to bear witness to Christ. Now you're intimidated. Now you can see the coal has turned cold. Now, amen, you're beginning to back off. But also we can talk about a famine of his presence. I don't know tonight, am I the only one who's gone through times we felt like God has left the building? That our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. That you're trying to pray and you're getting the engaged tone from heaven. That God's not listening to what you're saying. That you know what, I'm not saved anymore. That he's, you know what, Jesus, the spirit of God has left the building. I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who's ever gone through that tonight. You know, sometimes 
When adversity comes to us, we get discouraged because we think God has abandoned us. And here you are, here I am, we're right where God wants us to be, but we're still suffering hardship. So now that's how life works. That's exactly how life is. Trials are the normal experience for the people of God tonight. That if you're saved and born again, you are going to have to deal with trials tonight. God's will tonight is not always easy. It's not always, you can see the prosperous path tonight. It is often gut-wrenching. It is often challenging. It is often, amen, a, 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 a steep climb up the hill. It is something, amen, tonight that is not going to be gained easily. So at these times, it is important we need to listen to God. At least we better learn to listen to God. Now, due to this famine, the Bible says Isaac went to Gerar. And he goes to Gerar in an attempt to preserve his wealth. And it is here he decides while he's at Gerar, you know what, I'm going to go to Egypt. And again, what's so interesting is that his father, many years when he was in the same position, did exactly the same thing tonight. That he decides, I'm going to make a beeline towards Egypt. In fact, I'm going to stop and say this tonight. That's not just a trait of Isaac. That's not just a trait of Abraham. It is also a trait of the people of God. Because when famine begins to take its toll tonight, Egypt, or our case, the world, can always begin to, begin to seem very appealing. And what you saw at once was wrong and bad. Now is not so bad. What you said I would never touch, now you are beginning to open and give leeway to. And we begin to rationalize in our mind by saying, well, at least there's food there. Or at least there's fun there. At least there's no pressure uh, at this place. And the world tonight is always looks inviting because tonight um, the world, amen, always seems to be prospering when the kingdom of God seems to be suffering. Now, Isaac tonight is not wrong. I don't believe tonight Isaac is wrong by being concerned about the famine or concerned about feeding his family. But what you see tonight is a man who makes a decision, but there's no God in that decision. Can I help you tonight, sir? Can I help you tonight, my brother? God help you if you make a big decision with your family tonight and you haven't inquired of God. God help you tonight, you make a huge decision, amen, that affects your, uh, your children, affects your wife, amen, affects destiny, and all it is because of something you want to do, and you have not sought the Lord tonight. Because that's exactly tonight what this man is about to do. He was wrong for failing to trust God. He was wrong for trust, allowing God to, God, I'm, you're going to provide and take care of my need. And I'll look at three things tonight to do when famine comes. Number one tonight, when famine comes, it's important you allow God's word to direct you. Tonight, God still speaks. I'll say for you, amen. God still speaks and he speaks through his word. I'm a firm believer tonight that God always steps in before things fall apart. I prefer to believe it tonight. Before you and I do something completely stupid tonight, God always shows up tonight, and it is always up to us whether we are going to listen or not. It's always up to us whether we're going to obey or not. Listen to me tonight. You better allow the word of God to override your fears. Because a famine comes, and the first thing we do like Isaac is we panic. I wonder tonight is there any panickers in the house of God. That the moment, amen, difficulty comes, um, amen, we begin to panic. Um, and in our text tonight, God directs Isaac by his word. In verse 2 uh, of our text, the Bible says, Then the Lord appeared to him uh, and said, Do not go down to live in Egypt. So, so, so do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. You cannot get a more clear word than that. He wants to go. And God says, You better stay where you are. You better stay put. 
I don't get how nice and prosperous and all the bright lights and all the glamour, I mean, that's happening down there. Amen. I don't care, man, how big the garden is. I don't care, man, how a, a prosperous the land where you can get that job is. You better make sure God has told you to go. Amen. You better make sure, man, God is giving you the green light. And if you go without God tonight, I'm going to prophesy you are in deep. That's a clear word. Tonight, God commands Isaac not to go down to Egypt. But Isaac, you need to stay in Gerar. And he does this tonight to teach Isaac, to teach you, and to teach me tonight that his presence is always with us tonight. And God has the power and the ability to bless us no matter what situation we find ourselves in tonight. God can move. Tonight, listen, there are fixed principles that will not change because you're going through a hard time. And God's not going to change some things to bless you tonight. God's not going to make summer longer because you want to live in a hot day, have hot, more longer hot days. God tonight, amen, amen, he's a God who has principles and he sticks to those principles. And tonight he's able to bless you regardless, amen, or should I say regardless of what is happening in your life. And he does it, amen, by some ways. Number one, he does it by restoration. The Bible speaks about a man with a withered hand that Jesus touches and Jesus heals this man. Jesus restores this man's hand, amen, back to full working form. Jesus doesn't turn his hand into a foot. He simply restores the man's hand back to full working uh, form. God works not just for restoration. He works through multiplication. There is a boy who five loaves and two fishes tonight. Um, and Jesus blesses that food. He gives thanks. Um, amen. And that food now begins to feed 5,000 plus people. Jesus does not turn the food into chicken. He doesn't turn, amen, the five uh, loaves and the two fishes into beans. He simply multiplied it um, and allowed it to meet the need that was present. Our God works through multiplication. Our God works through restoration. But also our God works through acceleration tonight. There is a miracle he does. He calls his first miracle where he turns water into wine in the wedding tonight. And wine is simply 97.3% water and the rest tonight, amen, you can say is the grapes. But here he is tonight. He accelerates the, the process and we have wine tonight. Church, listen, God can bless us in a bad economy. God can bless a bad marriage. God can bless a difficult ministry. God can bless a challenging workplace. God can bless us in any situation we find ourselves in tonight. Number two tonight, we need to seek the blessing in the famine. Listen to me very carefully tonight. There is something for you in that place of difficulty. In that famine time, in that difficult time, there is something for you to learn. There is something that God wants to develop tonight. Uh, many times we look at times and places of difficulty and all we see is difficulty and we fail to see that in this difficulty, there is something there for me that God wants to do. Listen to verse three to verse five uh, of the text. The Bible says, dwell in the land and I will be with you. I will bless you. Uh, I, I, will, I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give you, I will give to your descendants all these lands and in you uh, and your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Listen to me. When we go through things, we can either come out earlier or come out late. When we go through difficulty, you have an option. You can come out early from that difficulty or you can stay for a long time and come out very, very late. It all depends tonight whether you are going to learn the lesson or not. One thing I tell people, there is a lesson in what you're dealing with. Are you learning the lesson? Because if you're learning a lesson, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. It, 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 what you're going through, it's, it's, it's irrelevant as long as you learn the lesson. If you have not learned the lesson, then you might as well get comfortable in the problem. There is a lesson. There's a lesson in the difficult times in your marriage. Who said that? I did. There's a lesson when you don't have a job. There's a lesson when nobody likes you. 
there's a lesson in those difficult, challenging times of life. And we don't like it because it's difficult and challenging and we don't want to stay there too long. And I'm with you. I don't want to stay there too long, but are you going to learn the lesson? What is the lesson the Spirit of God is trying to teach you tonight? Because listen, God, he basically formally tells Isaac that the blessing of his father, listen tonight, the blessing of his father Abraham will be passed to him and to his sons. That God says, Isaac, I'm going to hook you up because of what daddy did. And he's going to hook him up because what his father did. Number one, one, because we serve a faithful God. But number two tonight, church, is because Abraham was faithful. I hope somebody heard me tonight because this is serious. There's a blessing waiting, Isaac, waiting for Isaac, not just because we serve a faithful God but because his daddy was faithful. His papa was faithful. Somebody better hear me tonight. Mommy is faithful. That the person that brought you in the world has been faithful. Church, there is something good for us because of others who went through their famine. And I can overcome because others have overcome before me. I, I, I can get to the finish line because others had gone to the finish line before me. In verse 5, God makes, spells it out very, very carefully. He says, he starts with the word, because Abraham. Isaac, you're going to get the hookup. Isaac, you're going to get the upgrade. Isaac, you're going to level up. Why? Because Abraham. Because of what your father did. The point being made here tonight is that Isaac, because of the spiritual and fervency of his father, is going to be a spiritual benefactor of, of a godly parent. I wonder how many godly parents do we have here tonight. I wonder how many godly parents are watching tonight. I wonder how many godly parents are, amen, to be our present tonight. Here is a man who's going to benefit because of the godliness of his father. Tonight, we want to, hopefully tonight, amen, we want to, we want, we want to be able to leave some form of inheritance, amen, to our kids. And we need to strive for that, amen. But let me tell you something tonight. The greatest thing you can leave towards your child, amen, is faithfulness towards God. Because they benefit from it. They're going to benefit from it. There is something that's going to trickle down from you and is almost, they're going to upgrade from it. Because you were faithful to God, because you trusted God, because you, you did what was right before God, because you are, because you are obedient tonight. And here tonight, amen, he's about, to, he's about to be blessed because of his own obedience. You see, what we see in the scripture is that God always keeps his people alive during famines if they obey him. And the key to all of this tonight, church, is not just for our survival tonight. It is for those who come after us. It is for our children's survival. It is for our disciples' survival. It is for the couples in the ministry, in the house of God's survival tonight. It has been done, amen, if you and I do what's right, if we walk in obedience tonight, listen tonight, we are saved because Jesus was obedient. We are blessed because he was obedient. And tonight we are, we are, we are enjoying the blessings of God because the soul of God has gone before us. Tonight, amen, our children, amen, tend, amen, they will, they, 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 will, they will benefit. If you and I will walk in the obedience and the grace of God, there is something awaiting them if you do all right. Last is tonight, so where you are. So where you are. I want to challenge you tonight. I don't know what's happened in your life, but I want to challenge you to believe God where you are. Some of us, spiritually, we're doing this. We're here, but if we, if we take the spirit of your body, you're not looking forward, you're doing it. Or your head is out of the window. You need to believe God where you are. We look at our workplace and we, we twist our kiss of teeth. We look at our home and we're like, why don't you believe God where you are? Believe God where you are. 
Show your faith where you are. We may say tonight, well, I have no faith, and especially during the famine, I have no faith at all. Listen to me, that God has given all of us a measure of faith. And even though our faith is small, it is extremely powerful tonight. See, the problem tonight is that some people like Isaac tonight have invested in running from their problem with the faith God has given them. That instead of trusting God where I am, I think that the answer tonight is to run away and turn my back to what's in front of me. I want you to think about Abraham tonight. Think about Sarah. Sarah is barren. That means this woman cannot have kids. That means we're dealing with a barren and a, a, a womb that is in some serious famine tonight. Yet God tells Abraham, I want you to sow in barrenness. And if you read verse 12 uh, of our text, uh, uh, the Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Tonight, church, we need to sow in the famine. Sow in that place and that time of difficulty. One of the things that catches me as a preacher, but also as a Christian tonight, is people will hold back giving when times are tough. That when times are tough, all of a sudden we begin to hold back in our giving. Let me tell you something tonight. Let me give you, let me give you a tip tonight. It's for free. That is the time to give. Because that's faith. And the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That you want to talk, 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 talk. But God says, I'm looking for the faith. And when there's time, listen, it's easy to give when you have tonight, believe it or not. It's very easy because you have to give it. But when, you, when it's difficult to give it because of what you're going through tonight, and you still give, let me tell you something. God gets up on his throne. In fact, Jesus' father sit down, this is me. He gets up and begins to clap for you. Stand innovation. You are going to get the hookup of your life. And I believe tonight God doesn't move for many tonight because at the time where we need to display faith, we don't believe in where we are. Tonight, faith is doing the right thing when it's tough. Faith many times can almost seem unnatural tonight, but when you have faith in God, when you move for God in faith, it makes room for a miracle. I want to close tonight, look very quickly from famine to feast. Now, if you do a Bible study on famine tonight, you're going to come to some conclusions. And I'm going to give you two conclusions tonight. And I challenge you to do it yourself. If you do a Bible study on famine, you're going to find out two things. You're going to see, number one, tonight, that famine is often uh, linked, uh, 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 is often linked uh, towards a, you could say, a natural uh, uh, occurrence of nature. It is a work of nature that, that when famine comes, it is it's something that nature, you could say, that, that happens in nature. But also, if you do a Bible study on famine tonight, uh, you're also going to find that not only is this something that has to do with nature tonight, it has to do with the hand of God. And hand tonight uh, indicates power. But also hand, I don't know if we don't like this tonight, indicates discipline. That is not just power. Hand is not just a picture of power. In the Bible, hand is a picture of discipline. You see the hand of the Lord was heavy upon. And he's speaking about his people. And of course tonight, he's not saying the hand of the Lord was powerful upon. No, the hand of the Lord was heavy upon. And he's speaking to, and he's addressing his people. See, God would at times let a famine happen because his people have gone astray. And I believe tonight, if you read the word of God, you did your own study tonight, that famine, many times they come in the Bible for the same reason tonight that famine comes into our lives tonight. It is because of something that God's people are not doing. That a famine shows up in our finances. A famine shows up in our home. A famine shows up in our relationship. A famine shows up in our spiritual life tonight. Many times because of something we are not doing. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6 and chapter 7, you read in your own time, there is a famine in Samaria. And the people are dying and resorting to all manner of madness to simply survive. And they are surrounded by the enemy. And they had two choices tonight. They are surrounded by the enemy. It's a siege taking place. And in a siege tonight, you are going to even starve to death within the city. 
or you're going to surrender and come out. And little bit tonight, that's exactly what the devil wants. The devil wants you and I to surrender tonight. And in this, in this time and this season of famine, we are introduced to four lepers. These are men uh, who are outcast of the society. Uh, they couldn't live in the city of Samaria because uh, uh, they were lepers. And you can imagine tonight uh, how these men, uh, uh, difficult it was. Uh, uh, lepers lived by begging arms and finances from people to live. They will cry out. The people will throw money from a distance uh, or they'll live at a specific place. Uh, but here it is. There is a famine going on. No one's giving them money. No one's living uh, money. Uh, uh, and not only are the people starving, but the lepers uh, are starving. It is a very, a uh, very difficult time, um, and they, 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 you can say tonight that difficult times uh, uh, comes uh, uh, presents. Uh, you can say desperate solutions tonight. Uh, so they decide that uh, as a mark, you can almost say of their desperation. Uh, they decide, you know what? Uh, they knew there was no food in Samaria because uh, uh, Samaria is having a famine, uh, but there has to be some. There has to be some food with the Syrians. This is the people who surrounded Samaria. Uh, the, the, Samaria has no food at all but the Syrians surely they have some food so they decide you know what um, we are going to make our way uh, to the, the Syrians and we're going to ask them to give us some money or give us some food maybe they don't but do maybe they won't but if they don't uh, and they kill us all it is we're dying earlier because we're going to die anyway right all it is they're just speeding up the process and in their mind they were better to be killed swiftly than to die slowly for by starvation so they begin to make their way uh, towards uh, the camp uh, of the Assyrians tonight, uh, hoping that the Assyrians are, somehow will, will take pity towards them. And the Bible says, you read it yourself, the Bible says, as they went. It's almost as, the Bible says, God magnified the footsteps of these men. Now, I know I know what's happening nowadays, but I grew up during the time of South Systems. I think there were some serious subwoofers going on. I, I listen tonight. God put some base. God stacked up those speakers on those men's feet. And as they began to make their ways towards the, uh, the camp uh, of the Assyrians, uh, the Bible says God magnified them. Uh, amen. Their feet. It would sound like a whole army. It was just four leprous men. It sounded like a whole army was coming. Um, and they began to say, maybe the king of Assyria, amen, uh, has, uh, has hired the Egyptians to come and fight us. Uh, and there's a panic going on. And they run um, for their lives. Uh, and when these four lepers come into the camp, uh, it is empty, it is deserted, but there is food, there is garment, there is gold, there is silver, and these men are severely, totally, utterly blessed. Now, why am I saying that tonight, church? See, the problem of our lives tonight can often come down to a catalog of bad decisions, and a decision tonight is a seed. It is a seed that will bring a harvest of our choices tonight. Here is Samson. Samson makes a wrong decision by choosing a wrong woman. We can make a wrong decision by choosing a wrong woman or a wrong man. Samson makes a wrong decision by choosing wrong friends. Here is a man. He's never with his people. He's always with the enemy. Hey man, he chooses wrong places. He's always in the land of the Philistines and the lands of the oppressors. Never really with the people of God. It's like, listen to me tonight church the will of God has an address God has a place for us and it is critical that we are there God had a place for these lepers and it is critical that they were, their lives depended upon it. They could have stayed where they were and they died. They could have gone back to Samaria and died. They could have gone straight and went to where the Syrians could were and they may die See, God has, amen, a, a, a will and an address and a place that he wants us to be. And I believe that the greatest thing we can do is to make good choices. I believe in the wrong places. Now, maybe right now we're in the wrong place. What's going to remove you from that place is a good choice. Now, maybe it's right now, amen, maybe we're in a wrong decision or wrong relationship, amen. But if you make a right choice, amen, God can remove you from that, amen, at that bad place with the good decision that you have made. The Bible tells us tonight that the Lord magnified these men's footsteps. And I believe tonight God wants to magnify our feet as well. I remember, here am I, I got saved 
I believe it was maybe a week uh, 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 of my salvation. I end up going to this, this party, this rave, uh, and I'm there, and I begin to get convicted. I shouldn't be here. I don't believe, belong there anymore. And I literally ran out from that place. I, I never went back ever again. And I really believe tonight God magnified my decision when I went home. Tonight, the Bible says God magnified Isaac. He magnified him when he decided to do what's right. When he decided to do what God wanted him to do tonight. And he decided to be where God wanted him to be. Verse 12 tonight tells us the moment we obey is important tonight. Because that's when your feast is going to begin. The moment Abraham said, God, I'm going to obey you. I'm an old man. Sarah is an old woman. And he says, I'm going to trust God. The moment he did that, church, the moment you can say the sperm touched egg, life happened. And Isaac came. Tonight, God blesses this man. And he blesses him with a great increase. The Bible says he reaped a hundredfold. And there seems to be this emphasis laid upon the time. It was the same year where there was a famine in the land. And while others tonight hardly reaped anything, while others tonight were barren, while others were going through a very, very difficult time, God did something special for Isaac. God did something unusual for Isaac. And I guess the question tonight is are we going to trust God for the same for us? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Amen. At a time of famine, when the whole land was in famine, when Isaac thought about running to Egypt and God said, you better stay where you are because I've got something for you here. Everybody is going through famine. Everyone's going through it. They're out. But Isaac is benefiting. Isaac has been blessed. Isaac has seen fruitfulness. Isaac has seen life. Isaac is prospering. Isaac, amen, is increasing. Isaac is going forward. Tonight, maybe you're in this building tonight and you've been giving your life to Christ. So maybe you're watching online. And you're lost in your sin. Tonight, Jesus is the only way out from what you're in right now. You've tried people. You've tried gimmicks. You've tried all these things, but it leave you empty, dry, and in want. Tonight, the answer to your family is Jesus. The answer to what's going on in your home, what's going on in your mind, what's going on in your job, what's going on in your marriage is Jesus. And if you want to put your faith in Christ, you want to put your faith in the son of God. If you, if you, you're about to pack your bags and run towards Egypt and God says, you better stay where you are. Because this is the only place I'm going to help you. You take matters in your own hands, you're on your own. But if you stay where you are and trust me, I'm going to cause you to prosper in this difficult situation. Tonight, the spirit of God is speaking to you in this place. You're not right with God. You're not saved. You say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. If that's you, we just lift your hand up tonight. I want to pray with you quickly so we can move on very quickly tonight. You're in this service, not right with God, or maybe you're watching online, you're not right with God. Just lift your hand up, put it down tonight. There's a sign towards the Lord. I want to get my heart right with God. I need him in this place. Amen. Very quickly, anyone here? Maybe a backslider. Backslider, I know what it likes to be in a famine. The prodigal son came to a place of want, famine. When you backslide, you're going to end up in a famine where God really, he doesn't leave you. You've left him. And because you've distanced yourself from God, you distance yourself from the source of blessing, of provision, of light. Tonight, if you just humble yourself and come back to Jesus tonight, that even in that time and that place of famine, God can and God will bless you tonight. If that's you, slip your hand up, you're backsliding. You want to recommit your life tonight. Amen. I want to pray with you. Amen. Amen. Then I want to speak to people of God tonight. I have no idea what's going on in people's lives tonight. For all I know, there's at least somebody here and you are in a famine. You're in a time and a place where it's dry. You're in a time and a place where you are in want. You're in a time and a place where you, you, there's a shortage 
of, 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 of the presence of God. There's a shortage of the grace of God. There's a shortage, amen, of, 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 of God just knowing he's with you and directing you. There's a shortage of the word of God. You feel like, you know what, I haven't heard from God for a long time that, that it's again that I'm praying and it seems like God's not answering my prayer. The God, God is, uh, he's changed his numbers, given it to everybody else but me. And, and, and there's a shortage in, in your life and you're wondering what's going on because you're doing everything that was right. You're, you're praying, you're, you're, you're giving, you're, you're, you're involved in fellowship, you're speaking about your faith and evangelizing. Tonight, can I help you again? Allow God's word to direct you. Give yourself to God's word. You'll be so surprised as you begin to plant that word in you, how God will begin to reach into what you've put in you and bring it out and place it in front of you and, be, and let that word be a light that guides you. Allow God's word to direct you. Allow the preaching of the word to speak to you. That you don't just come to church and switch off and just feel I'm here and that's okay. But I've contended to listen. I've contended to give my attention to. I've contended so God can direct my path. Because God can let me know what to do in this situation. God can let me know what to do with this person. God can let me know to do what I'm facing in front of me right now. And many times, amen, we just kind of allow the distractions of life to rob us of the word of God. That God can speak and God can bring clarity to a complete message in front of us seek the blessing in the famine what is the lesson tonight what is God trying to teach me in all of this what is he trying to bring to my attention because the length of your stay is dependent upon this so where you are what God wants to do is right here what God wants to do is in that home. God, what God wants to do is in that marriage. God wants you to do is in that place where you are. Where, what God wants to do is in this church. It's not somewhere else tonight. And God says, will you believe me where you are? Isaac is about to take matters in his hands and leave Gerar and go to Egypt. But God wanted to bless him in the place of a famine. And as he trusted God and as he obeyed God, we are told, and the man Isaac began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. And what's powerful about this, he's prospering in a famine. He's been blessed in a very difficult and a dark place. While others are falling off and giving up, Isaac is rising. And tonight, can I challenge you tonight to believe God where you are? Trust him where you are. And he would never let you down. Tonight, I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to us. Can we begin to pray tonight? Amen. Let's begin to speak to our God. Let's begin to respond tonight. Amen. In obedience. Amen. Tonight, I really believe God wants to bless his church. God wants to bless his people. God wants you to prosper in a time of difficulty and darkness. Friend, let me tell you something tonight. Amen. The world, amen, is going to go through a time of economic darkness. But God's people can rise through this. God's people can prosper through this. God's people can be victorious through this. God's people can lead through this. Where economies are getting bankrupt and people are losing their jobs. Where business is shutting down. God's people can prosper and be victorious in the famine. That what God did for Isaac... God can do and will do for you and me. That the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can be our blessing tonight. It's for us tonight. We are a spiritual family and we can benefit and be blessed because they made decisions for God. And tonight, if you and I make those same decisions tonight, you're going to tap into something powerful. You're going to tap into something that is eternal. You're going to tap into something, amen, that is of God tonight. And that means tonight, regardless of what the devil throws and the world throws tonight, amen, you're going to overcome. Hallelujah. We serve a God who always causes us to triumph in battle. Hallelujah.